Top pick number one, Morgan Stanley. Uh, do you like this particularly among the U.S. financials? I, I do, but I'm going to step back for one second. Since 1841, equities have returned in the U.S. about 9% a year wow. versus bonds about 5 Okay. However, there's two extended periods, one between about 1910 and 1945 and one between about 1981 and 2016 where bonds and stocks gave roughly the same result uh -huh. with less volatility in the bonds, right? So no wonder in both cases people got to like bonds a lot. In the late 1940s when stocks started to outperform, for the next 35 years they went up five for one, okay? So we have just come out of a period where bonds and stocks gave the same returns. So arguably for the rest of our investing lives, we may see stocks outperform mm. by a multiple in bonds, okay? So we want to be exposed to that. Morgan Stanley is the leader in institutional equities, and 43% of their uh, revenue and earnings come from wealth management, okay? Mm. So the wealth management business, they're the second biggest in the U.S. So this is a company that's firmly focused on domestic equities. 70% of their business comes from domestic U.S. Mm. So this is a great way to participate in rising interest rates great way to participate in improving equity markets and most importantly probably going forward we're going to have a little less regulation than we've had going backwards. Uh, Citigroup in the last uh, 10 years has gone from 7,000 compliance officers to 29,000. Oh, compliance officers. Under all of the regulation that's yeah. been in and now we're going to see a little bit of that get peeled back. So this is an industry that's been under siege and I think it's an industry that can do very very well going forward and Morgan Stanley has quietly transformed itself into a wealth management machine. It's funny, the world that we have now is so obsessed with risk, isn't it, and obeying rules, and yeah. This goes in cycles, right? Yeah. The pendulum loads up one way and then it comes back the other for a period of time. Yeah. A lot of these rules, if you got rid of them, what's the worst that could happen? Well, yeah, some yeah. of them probably overdone. Yeah. Now you've got a classic cyclical for us here, yeah. Dow Chemical. Yeah. So this is a good company getting better. They're merging Dow Chemical into DuPont. They're going to wind up splitting it into three pieces. So let's talk about chemicals for a minute. The U.S. now has the lowest cost natural gas in the world, mm. so they got very cheap feedstock. In a chemical company, natural gas is your biggest cost. Mm -hmm. okay? So you've got very low persistent natural gas prices because of what's happened in fracking in the U.S. You've got a company that's dominant there already. They're building chemical plants for the first time in 30 years in the U.S., mm -hmm. and Dow and DuPont, of course, are there. You've got an event that will take place over the next year that will likely unlock some value. You've got a company that generates uh, uh, about a 20% dividend growth mm -hmm. over the last five years. It's okay, yields 3%, yield percent. Yeah. Yields three percent. But if the economy is getting better, they're going to benefit. So if you think that the world is a little more business friendly, if you think it's good to have low costs for your for your feedstock, and if you think that catalysts can help, this is a company that probably can give us a pretty good risk reward over the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I wonder is there a danger of overbuilding? The reason I mention that is um, the, the Australian newspaper says in Asia there are signs they've been overbuilding refineries. People can get too excited. A absolutely, but there's been nothing new built in the U.S. in years and years and years. So uh, capital spending has been relatively low in the U.S. And in fact, Dow and DuPont plan to reduce their capital spending mm. and generate more cash going forward. Okay, and um, finally, Home Depot, and you really only go and buy new doors when you're feeling good about your job prospects. So this has been a company we've owned over a long period of time because we like to buy companies that can grow a dividend. Home Depot has, what, about 2,200 locations. They've been growing their same store sales at about 7% for the last five years. That's two and a half times GDP growth. Uh, they've been taking market share. Uh, they've grown their dividend 21% a year over the last five years. And if you think the consumer is, get, is improving, uh, this is a good place to go. We think the housing market's improving. Uh, and technically, after having consolidated over the last year, stock is breaking out. So I think it's a great entry point. We only recently have bought this stock back after not being in it for about a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, all three of these are long-term themes. All three are companies that give you dividend growth. All three are companies that we think will be recipients of money coming from things that act like bonds. Because we think June of last year was the lows in interest rates and arguably for the next 15 or 20 years we could see slowly rising rates, which means you need to own things that can offset rising interest rates. So you think bond refugees are going to show up in these dividend growing stocks? Still the most overowned parts of the market are the people, places people have hidden in to be in things that act like bonds. 
And if we are in an earnings driven market, not an interest rate driven market, they're the wrong things to be in. But this job's going to be exciting over the next five years, say, if inflation it comes is. back, because so many people don't remember it. Well, and it doesn't happen in a hurry. The last interest rate cycle started in 1946 at 1.5% on a 10 year bond. And by 1966, 20 years later, it was at 6%. So it's not going to happen overnight. Okay. But what happened during that 20 year period was dividend growth stocks went to 60 and 70 times earnings. So when people say 17 times earnings too expensive, I, I disagree. Yeah, the old growing dividend can make you rich if uh, you just sit on it for, for a couple of decades. Great show, David. Thanks very much. Thanks for David having Burrows me. has been our guest on Market Call. The Encore airs Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. And Market Call tonight is Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks very much for watching, and we will be back tomorrow.